fuck. Yes! Okay. Demoralize him! Quick! Wow. You just deal so much fucking damage, don't you? Okay, what character now? Uh, how about we tie a rope? Uh-huh. God damn it. Yeah, Octavia. Shit. Yes! Octavia nimbly climbed onto the roof of the cart and carefully crawled toward the ponies hitched, uh, hitched up at the riverbank. The ponies seemed to be relieved to feel a firm hand holding the reins again. The calm, they calmed down, the calm down once at once and allowed themselves to be unhitched. All right. In just a few moments, they were standing back at the ford, ready to pull the cart from the river. While the gnomes were busy, busy fighting the blah blah blah, gathering our strength, we began pulling the cart from the river. Ha ha! If you're certain you're ready, then let's do it. But be careful. Imagine the cart's full of gold or ale or something other, or other, or some other thing you couldn't bear to lose. The cart creaked and, uh... The exhausted ponies had worked themselves up into a lather and the fo and foam covered, the, covered bits of their teeth. The Baron tried to calm and reassure them. Um... A huge stone on the riverbed was blocking the cart, so the Baron tried to find and find it and move it out of the way. Shit. Let's try the athletics check again. Nope, failed it. Okay, so not the athletics check then. Is what I'm learning from this. Fuck. Good. Succeeded at both. We tied a rope to the cart. Okay, everyone was soaking wet, freezing and exhausted. The group's initial enthusiasm had all but vanished. They glared at the cart scornfully, ready to give up and forget about it like it was all a bad dream. The Baron decided it was time to raise everyone's spirits, be it with a smile, a noble order, or some shouting, or even a good round of swearing. Ha ha! Yes! After everyone struggled together for a while, the cart finally made it out of the muddy riverbed, rolled back onto the rocky ground of the waiting ford, prompting some seemingly indignant sloshes and squelches as the river released its trophy and rushed along in search of easier prey. 
Losing no time, the head of the gnome expedition jumped us inside for a good while, rattling and swearing where all that could be heard from the cart. Until the gnome's face finally reappeared from under the rooftop, seemingly satisfied. Almost everything's still in place, he announced cheerfully, jumping from the cart. It's all wet and crumpled, but at least nothing's missing. Thank you, travelers, if not for your help, guided by my keen supervision, of course. I'd have had to say goodbye to all my possessions! Cool. It is done. Come here, my valiant saver, savior. Let me have a word with you. The gnome that stands before you wears dirty and ragged clothes. They used to look stylish and wealthy long ago, but those times are long gone. His black hair is matted, a deep fresh scratch crosses his cheek. Despite of his rather pathetic look, the, gnomes beha the gnome behaves with inner dignity and even manages to maintain a superior manner. Indeed. By the way, it's a shame no one organized a greeting party when such a famous and popular person as myself arrived to your capital. I wasn't expecting a red carpet covered with rose petals, but you could at least have sent ahead some delegation. I have no idea who you are. Oh, at least some of my servants are still alive. Do you know how much it costs to train a proper servant? Sounds like your servants are nothing but tools to you. Truly, with masters like that, being a servant is not much of an improvement over being a slave. What's this then? Huh. Run along, little girl. The grown-ups are talking. Oh my god. So, you're not only arrogant, but a boorish swine as well. Why am I not surprised at all? <clears throat> <laughs> also, while I'm on that, I'd like to make an official announcement. The roads in your barony are in terrible condition. People must search for wading fords to cross the rivers because no one had bothered themselves with building bridges, and honest travelers have to take the risk of being attacked by kobolds at any moment. I see. So, how did you say your barony was called? Ah, whatever, never mind. When I draw the map of these lands, I will call them Maybe Local Baron Will Help. I guess it's a fitting name. You're an asshole. Yeah, how do you know I'm a baron? I told you I visited your capital some time ago. Weren't you listening to me? And I'm used to being greeted by officials when I arrive for settlements of at least some importance. The glory of myself and my exploits usually precedes me. And officials usually prefer to be on good terms with me. Yes, you're right. Mm. I should have remembered that your lands are in the middle of nowhere. And you don't get updates on important things in time. I don't like your manner of speaking, gnome. So what? Well, I don't like a lot of things. You know what I do when I don't like something. I try to change it. For example, I don't like your barony's roads, so I've reported to the authorities about it. Namely, you. And as for you, instead of pouting, you better get down to business and try to resolve the trouble. I can see it's your first encounter with the freedom of speech. Just do what you consider right and let others discuss it. You know, not everyone gets a chance to become a baron, so discussing a baron's actions is actually all the unlucky ones can do. No, I don't mind the freedom of speech. A baron supporting freedom of speech. Well, that's news. Remains to be seen what you'll say after reading my article. You have an article? Sure, whatever. So what happened here? How did your cart end up in the river? I see. You know what he told me? He introduced himself as the king of the kobolds and told me he needed our clothes because he wanted to dress his subjects properly, you see, as long as they've established the kingdom of their own. That's literally what he said. I wonder where did he learn the words? Obviously, I told him to buzz off. Some kobold wants to strut around wearing the clothes of the great cartographer Jubilos Nartropple. Oh, no way. So I've been explaining my position to him, being rather eloquent too, suggesting he and his so-called kingdom might as well fall into the deepest sinkhole. But in the meantime, I've noticed that kobolds have already started to untie my cart. Well, I called my men to keep the cart safe. They couldn't guess what to do on their own, just stood there with their mouths ajar. Then things heated up as the fighting started, and while we were fighting, the ponies dragged the cart to the river. Ah, stupid animal. I see. 
You said you were famous, but I don't know you. What are you famous for? That was either a stupid and offensive joke or a case of total ignorance. The latter, I hope. I'm famous as a traveler, a cartographer, an alchemist, and a journalist. The students of all the major universities study the world using my maps. My articles for different journals are well known everywhere from Andorran to Brevoy. You've definitely read some issues of National Alchemy, haven't you? I have not. The Almanac of the Inner Sea? Uh, no. Or the most scandalous one, the Independence, describing benefits and drawbacks of governments and regimes in different states. No. I didn't read any of these. Oh, well, don't answer that. I don't want to spoil my impression of your barony. It's spoiled enough already. It would be hard for me to write at least something positive otherwise. Wait, the Jubilas Narthropel? Author of the 14 and a half eulogies to Pitax? Oh my, every student in the Academy of Grand Arts devoured your books, especially after King Arabetti banned them, tried you in absentia, and sentenced you to death. Okay. See, at least someone in this shabby barony has at least a rudimentary education. Even if they got them in such a dubious establishment as the Pitax Academy of Grand Arts. <laughs> I was expelled for irreverence. Ah, is this so? Well, if it is true, then you just might not be beyond hope. Okay, so what is such a famous person doing th that far from civilization? Especially when you're this much of a fucking... I mean, you clearly crave the finer things in life! I pursue two objectives. The first is to write an article on this new barony of yours for the independence. The second is to draw a detailed map of the stolen lands. Before this barony appeared, it had been too dangerous to come here. But now an opportunity has appeared. Thanks to you, I must add. So, as you can see, the freedom of speech sometimes grants positive comments too. I still kind of want to slap you in the face. Anyway, I'm almost done with this journey. My article is practically ready, so is the map. All that's left to do now is to find an old dwarven outpost established here several centuries ago. What is this dwarven outpost you're searching for? Is stunning. You create a barony and still you know nothing about the lands you own. I'll have to enlighten you on the subject. Okay then, enlighten me. You see Long ago, there was a dwarven trade route crossing these lands. It connected Five Kings Mountains and the North. The route was so important to the dwarves that they were generous enough to set a number of outposts along it, manned with armed guardians to provide protection for the traders. Okay. One of these outposts must be somewhere nearby, lost and completely forsaken. But nothing can avoid the watchful eye of the great cartographer Jubilos Nartropel. I will find this outpost, and I will mark its location on the map. You can trust me on that. Uh, I see. Well, tell me, is this old dwarven outpost abandoned? Is it possible now it's used for... Uh, by trolls as a lair, for instance? Why not? Dwarves like being underground. Trolls like being underground, too. It's quite possible after dwarves left, their warm and cozy place fell into the hands of less attractive creatures. Well, I'm looking for the troll's lair. Maybe we're looking for the same place. Let's join our efforts and start looking together. Well, you prove to be a capable companion in the case of emergency. I guess I can entrust you with covering my back. Let's go. I will send someone for my cart later. Wait. Holy shit, he's an actual companion! I didn't see that coming. <laughs> 